Thir Thali and your YouTube psychic. Card of the day. Readings. Unboxings. Your daily source for things arcane. Hey everyone and welcome to today's video. Again, we are uh, pursuing the uh, Jack the Ripper case. In the next couple videos, I would imagine, we're going to be going over the numerous suspects. Uh, just a disclaimer, everyone is innocent until proven guilty in the court of law. This is not a court of law. This is my spare bedroom, which I call my office, basically. Um, and I do have to give you a trigger warning because we are going to be talking about uh, serial killers, murders, you know, all the gruesome details. So, if that is something you're interested in watching, stay tuned. Alright, these lovely gentlemen are uh, the, some of the suspects. There are well over a hundred. Um, but the ones that are uh, listed here are some of the most uh, notable, uh, the most commonly known as um, Ripper suspects. Um, and some of them were uh, convicted of other crimes such as murder and assault and so on and so forth. So, the concentration of the killings around weekends and public holidays and within a short distance of each other has uh, indicated to many that the Ripper was in regular employment and lived locally. Others have thought that the killer was an educated upperclassman, possibly a doctor or an aristocrat, who ventured into Whitechapel from uh, more you know, better areas of town. Such theories draw on cultural perceptions such as fear of the medical profession, mistrust of modern science, or the exploitation of the poor by the rich. Suspects proposed years after the murders include virtually anyone remotely connected to the case by contemporary documents, as well as many famous names who were never considered in the police investigation, including a member of the British royal family, an artist, and a physician. Everyone alive at the time is now long dead, of course, and modern authors are free to accuse anyone without any need for any supporting historical evidence. Suspects named in contemporary police documents include three in Sir Melville McNaughton's 1894 memorandum, but the evidence against these individuals is at best circumstantial. There are many varied theories about the identity and profession of Jack the Ripper, but authorities are not agreed upon any of them, and the number of named suspects reaches over 100. Despite continued interest in the case, the Ripper's identity remains unknown and the term Ripperology was coined to describe the study and analysis of the Ripper cases and the murders have inspired numerous works of fiction. For well over a hundred years since the time of the Whitechapel murders, the identity of the killer has been hotly debated, with over a hundred suspects having been named in the process. While many theories exist, some more advanced than others, none of them have proven to be indisputably convincing. Now our first lovely gentleman is Montague John Druitt. He was born in Wimborne Minster, Dorset. Druitt was a barrister who also worked as an assistant schoolmaster in Blackheath, London, to supplement his income. Druitt was named as a Ripper suspect by Assistant Chief Constable Sir Melville McNaughton when his decomposed body was found in the Thames on December 31, 1888. The cause of his death 
being a suicide drowning because Druitt's suicide took place just a few weeks after the slaying of Mary Jane Kelly on November 9, 1888. It prompted authorities to consider him a prime suspect for the Ripper murders. After further investigation, however, the only thing that seemed to link Druitt to the murders was the coincidental timing of his suicide drowning. In the investigation, McNaughton incorrectly listed him as a 41-year-old doctor, hence lessening suspicions when it was realized he was, in fact, a 31-year-old barrister. Shortly before Druitt's suicide, he was released from his duty as assistant schoolmaster. Some modern authors believe that Druitt may have been a homosexual, which could have been the reason for his dismissal. This in itself may have been enough to drive him to suicide. It was also known that his mother and grandmother both suffered from mental illness, thus he may have been dismissed due to fear of hereditary mental health problems. Druitt was in Dorset playing cricket on September 1, 1888, the day following the first of the canonical five murders. Druitt's home in Kent was also miles away from Whitechapel on the other side of the Thames. Most Ripper experts agree that the killer had to be local to Whitechapel. Later on in the investigation, Inspector Frederick Aberlein was believed to dismiss Druitt as a serious suspect due to lack of any substantial evidence beyond the timing of his coincidental suicide. George Chapman, a Polish-born whatever, emigrated to the UK shortly before the start of the murders, sometime between 1887 and 1888. He later took the name George Chapman somewhere around 1893 to 1894. Chapman was hanged in 1903 for poisoning three of his wives. Chapman had used a compound known as tartar emetic, which he'd purchased from a chemist in Hastings. Tartar emetic is poisoning results in a very painful death, similar to that of arsenic poisoning. Chapman worked as a barber in Whitechapel during the time of the Ripper murders. According to author H. L. Adam, who wrote a book in 1930 about the Chapman murders, Aberlein favored him above all other suspects. It was also noted that the Paul Mall Gazette reported that Aberlein continued to suspect Chapman after his convicted hanging. Many experts dismiss Chapman as a possible suspect due to the difference in his modus operandi, which was poisoning rather than butchering. Yet, he was considered to be Chief Inspector Frederick Aberlein's primary suspect. Aaron Kosminski, born... Aaron Mordecai Kosminski was an insane Polish Jew who was admitted to Colney Hatch Lunatic Asylum in 1891. They did not care about PC back then, did they? Kosminski immigrated to England in the 1880s and worked as a hairdresser in Whitechapel during the time of the Ripper murders in 1888. It wasn't until years after the murders that documents were discovered suggesting that Kosminski, who, you know, of course without a, fore, a forename, was a police suspect. At the time of the murders, police named a Kosminski as one of their suspects and described him as a Polish Jew in an insane asylum. Nearly a century had passed since the investigation before Aaron Kosminski was identified as THE Kosminski. 
the police had suspected at the time of the murders. The reasons for Kosminski's inclusion in the investigation are unclear, as there is little evidence to suggest he was the Ripper. It is possible that Kosminski was a victim of anti-Semitism or was perhaps confused with another Polish Jew of the same age, for instance Aaron Cohen, a.k.a. David Cohen, who happened to be another institutionalized Polish Jew at Colney Hatch, but with, a ve with very violent tendencies. Kosminski was mostly harmless while at the asylum, his illness taking the form of auditory hallucinations, paranoia being fed by others, and refusal to wash or bathe. Melville McNaughton named Kosminski as a suspect in his 1894 memorandum, as did former Chief Inspector David Swanson in handwritten notes seen in the margin of his copy of Assistant Commissioner Sir Robert Anderson's memoirs. In McNaughton's memoirs, he states that there is strong reason to believe Kosminski is the Ripper because he had a great hatred of women with strong homicidal tendencies. In Anderson's 1910 memoirs, he claimed that the Ripper was a low-class Polish Jew, to which Swanson added the name Kosminski in the margin of his copy. Swanson also noted that Kosminski had been watched by the police at his brother's home in Whitechapel, was later taken with his hands tied behind his back to the workhouse and later on to Colney Hatch Asylum, and that he died shortly after. In 1887, in Arthur Martin Fido searched asylum records for any inmates named Kosminski. His search turned up only one, Aaron Kosminski. McNaughton and Swanson's notes both bear descriptions of the suspect that are similar to those found in the asylum records. However, Swanson's claim of Kosminski's death shortly after his admittance differ from his file. Aaron Kosminski actually died in 1919. Alright guys, I am going to have to cut the video off here, and we will continue our uh, breakdown of the suspects come Monday. Um, so far, we've only gotten through three, and there is a huge list to go. So, hang in there with me while we get through all these guys. Um, my final thoughts on this, uh, as far as the first couple go, is um, I don't think that the police knew anything of what was going on. Uh, as far as, you know, who actually did the murdering and all that. Um... This was before, you know, all of the uh, scientific um, study that went into um, serial killers and or, you know, multiple murderers in the 70s and 80s. Um, but uh, the 19, 1970s and 1980s, not 18. Um, but... Uh, you know, this was back in a very different time than we have today. Um, as you saw, however, um, one of the suspects was uh, believed to have been homosexual. Um, and uh, that was most likely the reason that he was terminated from his position. Um, that still happens today, even though everyone says... Uh, you know, it doesn't. So, um, do apologize. My cat came in here, and my little dog um, does not like the cat to be around me, so they she chased him off. Um, so, uh, I will see you guys on Monday with several more uh, Ripper suspects. 
and uh, once we get through all of the suspects uh, we will start our uh, tarot readings which is going to be a long 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 <laughs> video i'll probably break it up too thanks for watching thanks for watching today's video don't forget to subscribe to my content and like this video want more Feel free to order your own personal reading at www.tirthalian.com. That's T I R T H A L I O N.com. Don't forget to click the bell icon so that you're notified every time I upload a video.